This uh, Nixie tube based uh, calculator here is circa 1969. And, uh, I'm sure we'd like to see those Nixie tubes turned on, right, Trevor? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Do, do they turn on? Well, I haven't tried powering this machine on. I bought it from the US. So I'm assuming it's 110. Well, there's one quick way to find out. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Power supply does not say. Yeah. Anyway, we'd, we'd like to see those mixer tubes on, but I don't think that's going to happen. Condor chest, mate. Uh, circa 78. Nice box there. Um, then we move on to our tent machines. That's quite, quite an old disc drive there. Yeah. Pet 2001, which is the first one. That uh, needs a bit of restoration. You can open it up. The built in tape drive. Oh, that's good, yeah, I think that opens yeah. like a hinge. Just opens up like yeah. that. And that's essentially a Kim 1 board in there, so like slightly augmented Kim 1 board. Yeah. that down like that. There's a, a, again, a, another pet. A pet. 316, 36 game. Yeah, yeah. Ted A32. Did you ever have the 20? Yes, I have the Retro Games remake. Ah, okay. Alright, the Retro Games remake. There's the box for the Vic uh, 20. Moving on here. This is the um Something that not many people have heard of. It's sort of mainly a Japanese, Japanese uh, variant, and um, it's essentially a games machine with a keyboard. As the Commodore basically was, really. Although this one has takes carts or carts, yeah, cartridges. There you go, cartridges. Yeah. Um, so, John Laws did a lot of um, did a lot of sort of 
put his name on on things. Actually, read. I think he reads these audio cassettes there. Mr. Laws. John Laws was on my Commodore 64. Right. Okay. When I bought it. So and I called... could never figure out why, because I didn't think the man was particularly into computers. No, but... he's, um, he's what we would call a shock jock. Yes. Say, yes. I think at the time he wasn't so shocking. He wasn't so shocking. I think he was just an ad man, really. Just but an ad man. He's gotten, yeah. as they get older, they get more crazy. He's, uh, yeah. he's, he's drifted to the right, yeah. I would say. No, I, I had this keyboard. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty crappy. Didn't pretty work crappy. very well. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you could play piano on it by pressing down the keys underneath. So we've got a uh, Commodore 116 or 116, Commodore Plus 4, Commodore 16, the famous or infamous 1541 disk drive. Now that's an old one. That was a newer version, which was lighter. Was it 8 inch? Yeah, uh, no, um, five and a quarter inch. That's a five and a quarter. It looks, yeah. it looks bigger now. It does, yeah, it is. Yeah. For me, that looks bigger now. I think We've got everything stripes around. Right, yeah. Um, bread bin 64, Slimline 64. Oh, yeah, that makes it clean. But this is the uh, SX64. There we go. Luggable, transportable C64. Someone's written it's a random number generator here on this uh, Commodore here, that's, that's cool. <laughs> um, we have a very sad looking decrepit Commodore 128 here. Uh, it needs some TLC. It does need some TLC. Full of both. A bunch of uh, different printers. And here we've got the um, sort of uh, IBM clone series. We've got a Colt there, a PC-10 SD, and a 386 SX-25 from Commodore. Oh, okay. There we go. The Amiga brought out a uh, tower version like this as well. I think it was the Amiga 2000? Yeah, there was a tower version. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like this? Uh, as we go further here, here's the original Amiga, the 1000. This is not the original box. But, but uh, that's the well. That, that's the box for that one thousand. That's the one thousand. Yeah. yeah, I think it was a two thousand. The two thousand over there, and the two thousand five hundred over there. Right. Okay. So that's the one um, this is the sort of stock standard uh, five hundred, and there's Warlords. There's a particularly crisp one hundred and eight for us monitor um, with the trim plate working perfectly. <laughs> Oh shit, maybe not. Okay. That's got three opens left. The CD32, uh, that, with a screwed laser. The laser's not working. There's a board from a 4000. And this is my, my um, uh, collection of uh, sort of miscellaneous Commodore stuff. It's not turned on. Oh, it's scratched. 1200. 3000, another 108, a 1084 with the trim plate. This Amiga 500 here was from Parliament House. And then let's, let's move on. There's Regan. Say hi, Regan. Yeah. Hi, Regan. Hi, there you go. Another SX64. Um, a, two, a 2000 and a 2500. Uh, we have here a 600 with a little LCD display there, or is it a seven segment thing? What's well, the LCD for actually? Um, it was on before. Good, good it question, was on it was on before, yeah. Yeah, Nathan told him that I... I, I think it might be the SD card. I didn't listen well enough. Uh, what's, what is the, what, what's this for again? Oh, that's the display for the GoX. Uh, which oh, is like gotcha. a yeah. Right, right. Gotcha, GoX display. And uh, Commodore 16, that is working. <laughs> a, little, a little funky. And there's a, there's yeah, it's a, a project if anybody wants to buy one. An Amiga needs uh, some work. It does boot, but it needs cosmetic work. 
Yeah, yeah. Cosmetic. Yeah, just give it a clean. I started on. I started on the. Oh, that's a nice condition, isn't it? No, I've reclaimed. I sprayed that. Oh, wow. I painted that and the bottom shield, but the rest of it needs. It's actually the board's pretty clean. The keyboard's not, but the um, the board itself is in pretty good nick. The old plunky you saw. Yeah. So it does actually boot to the workbench screen. But it, yeah, it needs cosmetic work. So where are the, do you know the locations of the chips and their names? Uh, so it's obviously a 68K. That's a 68K there. Yep. But the Agnes. Yep. Yep. You've got Paula, Paula. Gary. Gaz. Denise. And yeah. there's the two CIA chips. There's one there and you have one there. There we go. And that's the uh, kickstart ROM. It's a Rev 5 board. What kind of paint did you use? Rock Lobster. Uh, it's um, B52 it's, Rock Lobster. So it's a white knight brand uh, chrome. So they, oh, listen, yeah. they listen to the Rock Lobsters. Um, yeah, B52 Rock Lobster. They listen to it over and over while. Design the board, and they loved it. Good stuff. Yeah, um, but they try to hide that. Seen better days. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it needs yeah. Um, it needs cleaning and retro writing. So the, uh, some, some patrons. Hello, patrons. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, all of these monitors have trim plates. Here's another one of our press with a trim plate. Um, how are all these 108 for us monitors surviving with trim plates? I've never seen that before. So, um, yeah, they're rare. Yeah. 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 They, they break so plates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Apparently, there's a trick to fixing the little hinges. Okay. They use um, uh, bicarb soda and super glue. Right, okay. And what they do, you gradually mould. It's kind of like a that's, replacement 3D printing. That's similar <laughs> to what, how I filled the holes printing. in this case. So, you epoxy resin oh. and, and bicarb soda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it makes it look. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very firm. It's on the start of the plastic, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. We're discussing this after lunch. This is a Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix number. Mm -hmm. Very interesting device. And what do we got here, Keith? As we move on, we've got 128 d Running CPM at the moment. Right, okay. Yeah, right. And another another Phoenix board. Yeah, it's a Phoenix And of course we have a uh, a Commodore 64 which plays the guitar. Probably better than me. I'm really slight, but I haven't practiced. 